Hi guys, Angelo here. I had a request from a friend of mine uh, for a little bit of a tutorial on how I go about uh, my HDR images. And I wanted to show you a pretty cool technique. It's I, I didn't invent it, it's out there. I have used it uh, from time to time. And uh, what it is, it's a single image HDR um, that will take your image from this to that. I'll show you how I did that. Um, it's a pretty uh, straightforward technique. The programs that I'm using are Lightroom 5, Photoshop CS6. I have the NIC software uh, plugins for Photoshop and Lightroom. And I also have the latest Photomatix, uh, which I really prefer for my HDR work. So uh, without any further ado, let's uh, show you what I do to get this shot. The first thing you do is take your original image and I applied your basic lens corrections. I leveled it. I'll even show you my settings here. Um, as you can see, I didn't do anything up here. Um, all I did was the basic sharpening, 25.5, 25. I masked it at 77. I fixed dust spots, added a little bit of luminance. Check these two boxes. Make sure this box is checked. And I leveled it using the uh, the crop tool. I also, um, as you can tell, I put the airplane on the right third because it was taking off, and I kind of wanted this mountain in the background. So that's where I am. Uh, and what you do now is uh, in Lightroom, I want you to hit the command and then the um, apostrophe, or actually virtual copy command. That's this command right here on a Mac make three copies. So your original and you're gonna make three copies. Then what I want you to do is you click on uh, the original, I've already done it, here's my three copies, but I'm, I'll do it again here. We'll go one, two, three. okay, just took a second. Here's our three copies, one, two, and three. So from this point, we are in the library module, okay? and it's very simple. We're going to leave one of these normal, just as it is. Go to the next one that you copied. Take the exposure up once. That's this button right here. And go to the third copy and take this one down. So I hit G and that takes me back to grid view. Now here are the three right here. One, two, three. I want you to select those three and hit control, click, export, to Photomatix Pro. Leave all these boxes unchecked because we didn't bracket this shot so they're gonna line up. There's no ghosting or anything like that. It won't have any issues there. Um, and I do leave this checked. Uh, I do want the uh, output format to be a 16-bit TIFF and I stack it with the selected photo and I export. Alright folks, uh, this dialog box will come up with Photomatix. I don't change this. I just leave it alone. It it knows what it interrogated as far as exposures, and I just let it alone. I hit OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to tone map this. And my this is your HDR image, and then this is your tone mapped. Now what I did, I'm going to share my settings with you. This is exactly how I got the photo, and these are the settings I used. So, if you can't see your screen, uh, I have it Tone Mapping, Detail Enhancer, Strength at 100, Color at 93, Tone Compression, and Detail Contrast at 6.1. I have Lighting Effects checked in Natural, Smooth Highlights at 54, White Point 0 0.908, Black Point 1.001, .001, Gamma 1.05, Temperature 4.6, micro smoothing 0, saturation highlights 5.2, saturation shadows 3.7, shadow smoothness 19, shadow clipping 0. Okay, so once that's done, close that up, and, and when you come down here, you'll see the TIFF is stacked to the right side of the 3. So now let's open up that TIFF. I brought my whites down. Okay, to minus 38. I brought the blacks to minus 4. Bumped up the vibrance to 33. And then 
I added a little more luminance again. Um, from here, I sent this into uh, Photoshop. And as I mentioned, I hit Command J, make a new layer, filter, Nick, define. And just let it hunt for the noise and kill anything that it sees. And it did a good job. Hit OK. And from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, going to go to Filter, Nick, Color Effects Pro 4. It, there's so much that you can do with Color Effects Pro. I, I really, I'll show you a few nice filters, but it's all going to come up to a matter of trial and error and coming up with a look that you like. Uh, I kind of have my own look that I like. It may not be for everybody, but um, it, it works for me. So um, I have some of my favorites over here. Uh, what I'm just going to add is uh, the detail extractor and um, be careful with this one. I mean, if you go too far, just I mean, it's pretty pretty dramatic. So I, I try to just put a little bit in there, maybe 15% there, 6% there, and a lot of times I use fine. For my detail and don't be afraid to look around the airplane to make sure you're not generating any halos or shadows or anything like that it looks good sometimes you'll see them on top of the engine inlet or on top of the fuselage but it did a nice job now with the control point technology we can decide where we're going to put the detail and in this case I rarely ever put detail in a sky that doesn't have clouds. So I'll put a minus control point up here. So select the minus, drop that here, and then just make the circle big enough to encapsulate that area. And then rather than putting a whole bunch more over here, all you have to do is hold down option on a Mac, grab that center right here, and just drag it over and you're duplicating. Now some of you might say, why don't you just make the circle bigger? Well then I could be taking detail out of the color pixel that's on the plane and I don't want that. That's where I want the detail. I just don't want it in that sky. So once that's done, we can then, um, if you wanted to check out you know, what happens when you add a little bit of uh, saturation or take a little saturation away, um, just wherever you, wherever you want it, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it about there. And then another filter that I just really like, I like uh, I like the brilliance and warmth and I like dark and light and center. So with brilliance and warmth you can add a little perceptual saturation to it, maybe just a touch of warmth because uh, it was the, a warm sunrise. Uh, that looks good. And add another filter, dark and light and center. And on this one I'm going to put the center rather than the center of the frame, I want it over on the plane because I want to draw your eyes to about a little bit about right under the tail. And then I'm going to make the size a bit smaller. I don't want it to lighten this area. I just want to keep it on the plane. So I'll take the size down to about there. And border luminosity doesn't need to be that dark. I just want it to be subtle. So that's with it. That's without it. With, without. You see how it will draw your eye to the airplane. That's it. That that you could save this recipe uh, and name it, um, and then it, and then put it as a favorite. And now, any time you shoot with backlight like that, where you've got a beautiful you know mountain panorama, you can just stamp that effect, and you're good to go. So we'll hit OK, and I'll be right back. It's going to save it back to Photoshop. Okay, we're back in Photoshop, and here's the Color Effects Pro. Uh, layer that we just made. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer and name this sharpening. And we're going to do a color channel sharpening. We're going to grab the red channel. Um, if I went too quick there for you, hit the channels tab, select the red channel on a Mac, control click, duplicate that channel, hit OK. Select the bottom and unselect or deselect this one. 
Now go filter, stylize, find edges. Now go image, adjustments, invert. Now go image, adjustments, curves. Let's bring the right side just past the center. Bring the left side off so that just the, we don't get any of the, this stuff sharpened. Basically, anything that's white is going to get sharpened. Uh, that looks good. Hit OK. Um, just go ahead and go blur, Gaussian blur. One pixel ought to be enough. So select this icon that selects your uh, the edges. Click the RGB layer. Click the Layers tab. And then go Filter, Sharpen, Unsharp Mask. Your mileage is going to vary on this one. I normally put it on the plane, and um, 250.3 and 1 is where I start. And on this one, I think I used about 0.7, maybe a little bit more. 1. You can see before, after, before, after. I just want to make sure that we're not getting any jagged edges. Uh, looks pretty good. Yeah, leaning gear looks nice. I don't see any haloing under this uh, flap. That looks good. So hit OK. Uh, now, Command D, deselects your selection, and I save this back to photo, uh, I'm sorry, to Lightroom. I'll be right back when it's saved. All right, we're back in Lightroom with our uh, photo that we just saved uh, from Photoshop. And now what I like to do is zoom out to where you can see the entire frame. I like to add a little clarity. And um, I select about 50 to 60. Drop it right here in the trees. Uh, but I think it just looks better. Um, get down here, put some clarity there. I'll put some clarity on the actual uh, taxiway and the runway. I think it just makes everything look better. So wherever you see something that's dark, let's throw a little bit of clarity in there. That's it. Uh, so there was the uh, before, and there was the after. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial.